Bank repos, they are a coming and they are coming fast. I mean, that sounds dirty. That's not what I meant. I was at the auction last week looking for bank repossessions. What can I find that's fairly inexpensive trying to get a great deal on some bank repossessions? Because as far as YouTube is saying, we are in a repo apocalypse. The sky is falling, everything's a disaster. Well, I did make a video last week about how many bank repossessions there were at a dealer auction. So what happens is when people stop paying for their cars, the bank repossesses the vehicle, they don't sell them to the public, they run them through the auctions and then people like like me, dealers like me buy them, then we fix them, we clean them, and we can hopefully sell them as long as they're not too rough. This one is pretty rough. And in today's video, we're gonna try to bring this thing back to life and hopefully sell it for a profit, and you're gonna follow along with me. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So this right here is my newest pickup. Oh, pickup as in purchase, but also pickup as in pickup truck. This is a 2015 Chevy Silverado LTZ with 157,000 miles. Now I bought this as a bank repossession. Somebody stopped paying for it. The bank had to repossess it. We bought it from a dealer auction because that's where they run it through. This was purchased from CAC, Credit Acceptance Corp. They finance the lowest of the low with credit scores and they typically have a lot of automotive foreclosures. A lot of automotive bank repossession. So because they're known for financing such subprime buyers, they get big down payments and then people stop paying for them and then they have to go collect on the vehicle. Now, when they go collect on the vehicle, they run it through the auction. I buy it at auction and whatever that difference is, is still owed by the previous owner. So let's say the previous owner owed 18 and I paid 13 for this. They still owe $6,000 to that bank. Now the bank is probably not gonna get it, but it does go on their credit report as delinquent for that $6,000. So as an owner of a vehicle, when we're going into this world where prices are now coming down and you probably overpaid for the past few years. If you go in a bank repo, if you do even a voluntary bank repo, you're still gonna owe them a balance. So beware of that. Now this again is a 2015 Chevy Silverado LTZ. You can see there are light scratches all the way down the side, which I actually like to see because we can correct all of this right here, all these swirl marks and this paint is gonna shine beautifully. It also has the 20 inch LTZ wheels on it. And then you can see it has a tonneau cover that isn't ripped. It's just, well, I guess it is ripped because that zip tape has lots of trash in the back because when they get oftentimes when they get repossessed they get taken with everything in them and then the auction cleans them up wheels nasty but i think those are cleanable the frame i mean we're in new england so that's pretty much what they look like in new england we don't have a lot of rust down here the rear bumper still in good shape not all banged up usually these are all smacked and whacked does have a rear backup camera the corners here are in good shape a little bit of rust right there that we can take care of again dirty wheels which i love cleaning a little bit of rust right here that we can grind down it's not bubbling so i can grind that right down to the metal we should be okay this paint flaking but it's not rusty which is great the big part cab corners and rocker panels all the way down the side are clean they're not rotted usually they're bubbling up in new england it stinks living here the rust belt it just is awful this is a 15 and a lot of these are rusty by now there is a spot on every silverado i've ever owned there's usually a dent i want to see if it's here i don't know why if you guys know why every silverado has a dent right here i would love to know why in the comment section there is oh there kind of is right here but that isn't the dent i was talking about typically it's right here and that's just bird mess this right here there's almost always a dent right there when i buy a silverado i have no idea why now this is a 5.3 liter v8 automatic it is four by four hundred fifty seven thousand miles it is loaded up so it has heated and air conditioning leather it has four by four high and low it does have a trailer brake does have memory seats does have a key in it that won't stop beeping does not have heated steering wheel i'm surprised to see an ltz that doesn't have heated steering wheel we have our nav display again with the backup camera heated seats wait a minute doesn't have ac seats either i'm confused ltz is the best model available like the high country is better than that but that comes with like real upgrades ltz comes with everything i'm surprised doesn't have heated steering wheel and cooled seats is i'm curious is that a fake badge is this a real ltz or did somebody just stamp that on there i don't know it does have real chrome handles usually like the lts have black handles this leather is gross but take a look at what it looks like now all that stuff in there we're gonna get all of that out it also smells pretty nasty in here there's some stains in the headliner what happens is this can sometimes leak and yeah the seal around here can sometimes leak and lead to headliners getting wet let's check out the front all right carpets soiled 
stuff all in here. These are things I love. I love cleaning cars. It's therapeutic for me. Wait a minute. This is an LTZ, but it's a six passenger. Am I missing something here? Is this really an LTZ? Usually it would have like a full center console, but it does have wood grain. How do I find out if it's a true LTZ or just an LT? Would I have to call the dealer? And it has the chrome trim package. Those I'm pretty sure are LT wheels as well. I feel like an LTZ would come with 22s. Hey, look at this. Is that melted from the exhaust? This thing is rough. All right, let's get to work on it. I'm going to bring it back to my shop and we're going to get started on it. Now I did cheat a little bit. This thing was already on the trailer. So because it was on the trailer the day I bought it, I was driving by the tire shop. I dropped it off at the tire shop. Well, I'm doing this a little backwards. I just picked up the Silverado from the auction today. It was already on the trailer and I have to get it to the tire shop. So because it's already on the trailer, the first thing I'm going to do is get this car some new tires, some fresh rubber. This tire, it's low, but more importantly, this tire, is choppy. So when it's out of balance, you'll see that it's low here, high here. So there are low and high points, especially you can see it right there. Choppy makes really, really loud tires. So even though these tires pass inspection, no one's gonna buy this truck because of the way it's gonna ride. Now here's an alternative to getting new tires and it's kind of fun. You'll see these tires are worn unevenly, right? So that one's worn unevenly. This one's worn pretty evenly. This one's also worn pretty evenly, but it has low tread. And this one is incredibly choppy. So the front end needs an alignment badly. Now here's a problem. I'm going to inspect this car after I do tires. I'm gonna do a four wheel alignment and new tires and then I'm gonna take it to my shop. If it needs tie rods or anything, it's gonna then affect the alignment, which is just ridiculous that I'm doing this all backwards. But my fun option, if this thing had two good tires in the rear, put these on the rear, burn out. Just smoke them if you got them. Smoke them smooth and they'll keep wearing the uneven rubber until they're even. It's actually pretty fun. I did it in Mini Cooper. Here's the video. The rear tires on this Mini Cooper were crazy choppy and you're gonna wanna stick around and find out how we actually fix them in this video. So we did a tire rotation, took the rear wheels and put them on the front of the car. Then from there, we pulled the emergency brake, took off the traction control and started spinning the wheels. Now by spinning the wheels, it's gonna even the rubber. This sounds crazy, but the rubber is now worn evenly on the tires. All the choppy tires have now been brought down to an even level. So instead of having to get rid of two junk tires, we now brought they them down it. to an even tread pattern. No more choppy tires. Thanks for watching and follow for more car fun. But for now, we're gonna get four new tires. Let's take it into the tire shop and we'll pick it up in a day or two. The next day. Looky what we have for you right here. This is my Silverado. 24 hours later with brand new sneakers. Brand new rubber on it. The tires are done. The alignment is done. Now we get to take it back to the shop. It smells like devil's lettuce around here. Now, anyway, now we get to take it back to the shop and go through it, recon it, detail it, inspect it, service it, repair it, and then sell it for a fairly decent profit. Shit, we crunched the fender. Truck just makes it onto my trailer and I hit the fender from the passenger side. Look at what I did. That's not even the first time I've done it either. Darn it. Good as new. There we go. You gotta watch out because this will rub the inside of the tire and you'll get a blowout. All right, we're bringing this thing back to my shop. I'm going kind of out of order. First thing we should normally do is put it up on a lift, check the undercarriage. We have a very, very rigorous state inspection. We check a lot ball joints, tie rods, fuel lines, power steering lines, brake lines, every suspension component. And we really check for rust and leaks. We don't want oil leaking on the exhaust because it can be flammable. We don't want brake fluid leaking because you might not be able to stop. We don't want power steering fluid leaking because you might not be able to turn. Those are all big, big factors. Tires and brakes are obviously included. We have brand new tires now. The problem with me doing everything out of order, I put brand new tires on this. This is the first time I'm driving it that you see me driving right now. It could have had a bad transmission. It could need five thousand dollars worth of auto repairs and i'm now a thousand dollars into tires before i even had the car inspected so normally i would do inspection repairs and then detail and then from there we can have it up for sale and listed because everything has been completed i'm kind of going backwards now we're going to go get it inspected unless we're too busy in the garage and our lifts are tied up then we will have it detailed and then inspected so everything's a little out of order today the next day so silverado is the next day we are busy 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 at my shop so oftentimes i like to take my vehicles to in 
independent inspection station for them to go through it. So before we even go through it on the lift and go through it at our shop, I'm gonna take it to these guys up the road and have them go through it and do a full New Hampshire state inspection. That way it's completely unbiased. It's not like I'm looking at it or my mechanic's looking at it so I can sell it and say, oh yeah, we went through it, we did that, which we do do. But instead I can say, oh, I took it to an independent auto repair facility. They did an independent inspection, completely non-biased. This place doesn't do me any favors. And then I can show them the sheet that a different repair shop found, like went through it. So it makes it a little bit easier to sell. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna have them inspect it. Good news too, AC's cold. I just drove in the AC's cold, I love that. So we'll get it back tomorrow and then we'll start the reconditioning process. And the other thing too that's nice is I am picking up my Jeep. So I kind of just have it on a revolving door. Like I pick one up, drop one off, pick one up, drop one off. That way I'm not constantly transporting vehicles. I'm just swapping cars constantly. I leave it here, let it get inspected. They call me, say it's done. I show up with my next car and then swap them out. So the Silverado I think is actually gonna be a fairly simple project. Like I don't think there's a lot that we're gonna have to do to it. Cross my fingers. To be honest with you, this F-150 that's not part of this video was far more work. And I just wanna show you how many things we did to this. Cause every car varies. Every one of them is different. I'm gonna start right with the seat. So you'll see we put new fabric upholstery right here. This is a new factory fabric seat cover. The outer bolster was worn. I replaced the foam and the seat cover. I wanna show you what the old seat cover looked like. I should have shown you what the new foam looks like compared to the old foam. So here's the old foam. You'll see how worn out that is right there. We got brand new foam and then the seat cover was just nasty. So that's the old seat cover, ripped, stained, ripped again, gross, disgusting. And then that right there is just, makes it a very unsellable vehicle. So I went on eBay, I got the seat cushion, I got the seat cover and it's gonna wear in. And even just sitting in this car, now like I sat in it and just fell into the foam. It was so, so comfortable, which is great. And it keeps going from there. Obviously we had a detail, we put the floor mats in and everything. It has great tires already. The bumper was bent right here. And this is a two piece bumper. So instead of trying to bend out a bumper and having it be an eyesore, this is what it looked like before. Thank you, Dave. We replaced the bumper as well. I say Dave did all the work. He did the seat covers, he did the bumper. We had it inspected. We have to do a wiper stock for it, right? The wiper only has one speed, so we're gonna do that as well. What else? And that leads us to where we're at right now. So the front bumper, oh, we did a ball joint as well. The front bumper is bent and I don't want to replace this bumper. This is a big bumper, it's an expensive bumper. I got the trim for this right here that was missing, but it won't fit because you'll see this is pushed in and the difference from here to here is like a few inches. This is an expensive bumper. We're going to try to pull this bumper. Now, if I put this hook right here, it's just gonna pull the bumper right here and make a big mark. So I have it wrapped around that block and I'm hoping hooking it up to the Hummer with the emergency brake on the Hummer, we can back up slowly and pull that bumper out a little bit. Dave, let's try it. Do you mind doing the honors? All right, very subtly, do it slow. According to my calculations, hang on one second. I don't wanna grab an old rag and I'm gonna put it right here because yes, that's what this is meant for, but I just want this to stay clean and nice. So I'm gonna put that right there so the chain doesn't ruin my tow hook. All right, there we go. Now it should just be light pressure. So I'm gonna tell you when it's tight. I do have the emergency brake set on the Hummer, so that shouldn't be going anywhere. Almost tight, keep going. Do you have enough space even? Do you have a backup camera? All right, you're good, go ahead. You're almost tight, slow, right there. All right, just go back a little bit at a time. You will have to apply some gas. Keep going, it's doing it. Keep going, this makes me nervous every time. It's working. Look at that, keep going. Oh my goodness, it's working. Keep going. Looks like it's four wheel drive time. Let's see how much space you have back here. That's a longer chain than I anticipated. Uh, you have about a foot before the ball of the, the toe ball hits. We don't need a foot. Go ahead. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. I think it's perfect, Dave. Uh, no, it bent in, so let's do a little bit more. Look at this. Perfect now, here. Keep going. Oh my goodness, it's gold. A little bit more, good. Oh my goodness, yes, we are spot on now. Look at how nice that is. I think we did it. So now you can release the pressure. It's awesome. You're just gonna have to fix the tabs and I think it's lined up. Now I'll show you in the next clip the finished product of that bumper trim, which should fit and clean that up a lot. Save me over $400 on buying a new bumper. Well, the Silverado is back. It has been inspected, does not have an inspection sticker because it needs two lower ball joints, a radiator, and a couple other miscellaneous items. Has four 
brand new tires on it. And now it's going in for recon where Rasul will detail it and make this thing look pretty. And then the parts are already here for repairs. So we're gonna be about a thousand dollars in repairs, which is about the average. That's about normal. The big things are like engine transmission. Once that happens, we're in deep trouble. Everything else we can take care of in house. So it's gonna get repaired after Rasul has taken care of some rusty spots and a full detail paint correction, interior, everything. He's already vacuumed the inside of the truck, but you can see like he vacuumed the inside, but it needs a good cleaning. I don't know why he put those down yet. I think it's just because people are getting in and out. The leather has to be completely reconditioned. I'm gonna try some Mr. Clean on this, see how it comes out. Those like Mr. Clean wipe things. And uh, she's like, that's hand scum. That's hand scum. It's probably on every button. And we're gonna dye the carpets as well. So here is the Silverado. She is complete and solid, which is great. So we have ball joints done, radiator done, brake pads and rotors. We have four brand new tires. The big thing in New England is the rocker panels are solid. And that is what sold me on this truck. But that paint really came out great. We did a paint correction, used some rubbing compound, then a polish, and it looks amazing. We brought the chrome back here. The dent I'm not gonna do anything about. I mean, it's a used truck and people do have to take into consideration it's a used vehicle. 20 inch factory wheels all the way down. The truck is great. Now, if you remember, there was some rust in here. We ground or grinded it down to the metal and then we got a color matched paint to touch that up and then going to the tailgate. Everything's good in the tailgate. We got rid of all the trash. Funny story, Rasul had a sinus infection. He dumped the barrel out with all the trash on the water, stunk everything here out. It smelled like a garbage dump and he didn't even know that it smelled. Uh, it was pretty disgusting. We have the WeatherTech floor mats, the Linex liner. <laughs> Access tonneau cover, and then these were some of the spots too that we had to grind or ground down to the metal, and then here as well. So, this is our truck. Wait a minute, I didn't show you the inside because you saw how nasty the inside was. Leather came out decent. We used a purple power and then a Mr. Clean, a magic eraser. I think it honestly could come out a little bit better, so maybe I'll try to do it myself. There's still some dirt here, which we'll take care of, but it has nav, backup camera. This is oh, so he there's still some spots missing. We'll take care of those areas too, and then going into the back, the back came out great. These look good is the key word. I'm gonna go through this again next week, do like one more final reconditioning because it's not, it's good, it's not perfect. And when people come look at this, like if they're gonna spend 20 grand or 18 or $19,000, they want it to look as nice as they can. They want it to look like a new to them vehicle. So we'll go through it one more time next week and then list it for sale for like 18,995. And that is how we profit in the car business. I buy something, I do the repairs to it. We hope there's nothing catastrophic. We list it for sale, we make a profit and then we move on to the next. Wash, rinse, repeat. Thanks for watching, I hope this video was Helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Wait a minute. Thumbs ups down below. It's appreciated. Just go right down below. Hit thumbs ups. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see y'all later. Adios.